Hi guys, welcome back. So in this video, I want to talk about the region passives and which to take them. And this is strictly more towards the casual players and there is no target farming in this video. So it is a very simple uh, layout and what passive to take for those, play for those players that just want to throw in an alchemy op and go and maybe some scare ups if you want. So this is just my own recommendation. You are free to always just change and tweak around. Also, I have linked the Google Sheet in the description below for your reference. Okay, I will not explain too much because you can always refer to the Google Sheet as I have explained all the important stuffs over there. Like why do you take this setup, uh, what scarabs to use and why it's not recommended. Um, and also as for the recommended maps for the particular region, that is still working in progress as I have yet to identify what are the good ones in the region for you to favorite them later. So do take note as I will update this in future. Okay, this is for Hewa Hamlet region. The first two passives to take will be Control Corruption and Amplified. This is for your Essence. Uh, over here is a no-brainer because there is a Zana map mod now on your map device that costs 3 Chaos and it gives you 3 additional Essences in your map. Okay, and the next passive to take will be Test of Loyalty and Bribery. This is for your Immortal Syndicate, uh, which is the Master Missions. And for the last one is up to personal preference whether you want to take Sacred Land for the additional Reacher Chance or Goose Call for the additional uh, chance to have Sacred Growth which is your Harvest. Okay, do take note for this region I have emphasized um, how roughly how you should be farming Essence and like corrupting the ones and how to get them and also understanding harvest what are more of like the important seeds that you should take no matter what otherwise uh, what other seeds is worth taking okay next for Valdos rest um, you're gonna want to take Omnius, Ominous Arrival and Diplomatic Escorts this is for your Harbinger uh, one thing I want to point out here is that if you are taking Diplomatic Escort um, make sure your build is able to sustain and kill it fast because they actually hit really hard and I am pretty sure most low budget versions will have problem killing it so uh, do take note of this note over here they are actually the king harbinger or, or the harbinger boss is actually very painful and if you are not confident not confident enough to kill it uh, you can always skip this to the last or the fifth passive skill later on okay so for your third one take spores of the wind fourth take epidemiology uh, i don't know how to pronounce that and then fifth take immune response this is for your blight um i think blight is the better option here compared to delirium because delirium is also quite hard in the early stages and there's a lot of good delirium modifiers, passive modifiers that have been taken away. So I really, really wouldn't recommend that. Okay. And as for Black, I've actually written below like um, what are the towers you should go for. So just briefly go through for most of the time, right? No matter what builds you are playing, always go for this scout tower with the flying minions. Um, they are not very healthy but their damage is very high and they have a very very large range so they can start hitting all the black monsters from far away and you wouldn't have to worry about them coming close to the tower if you have lots of this nearby okay and the next if you are actually playing a minion build you can choose to go for this or if you have extra points you can also choose to go for this doesn't have to be a minion build so take all of this empowering tower um, it actually buffs up all your other towers okay so um, this is if you are sorry i think i've written this wrongly so if you are building the minion scout tower go for this afterwards okay and the last one is if you need to slow down the mobs or buy time to clear other packs go for this uh, usually i will only get one of these freeze boat tower one will do uh, let's say if you have problems 
going from the top lane to the bottom lane then you can probably build one fishboat tower on the bottom lane to slow them down so that you can clear the top and then come back later at the bottom okay next up is glenard khans um first to take will be resource allocation together with contested development this is for your incursion and this is a no-brainer i think mostly everyone should have taken this because uh, no matter what rooms you take from elva to the temple uh, whether is it the left one where you actually change the room or the right one which you upgrade the room you are bound to have an additional upgrade to the room whichever sites you are taking so which means example if your left side is a tier 1 currency room where you can change and your right side is a, probably a tier 2 additional minion monster you can choose to take the currency one on the left side and it will add on the tier to that current uh, currency room which means it will be tier 3 okay this is very very useful and powerful for farming free currencies like this includes every other thing inside including your bridge legion and stuff so it's literally a free uh legion bridge mod or whatever you want to call it okay and next third get the high value target and face to face this is for your legion um i think this is the better choice even if your builds are not really good um as the other mods are not really viable in the early game or they are not casual enough for you to farm it there are actually some that requires you to be very powerful like the beyond side or obvious side where you require it requires you to get a scarab every single time okay and it is not super profitable unless you get a very high high level stygian vice okay and the last one is really up to personal option uh, personal opinion um, there's no right or wrong for this so it can be either total anarchy which is here that have your you have a 10 percent chance to contain 20 additional exile or you can take the abyss or you can take the beyond this is really up to personal preference if you feel you need more time to kill the legion you can always take the protracted battle or you if you feel you need more time for incursion you can always take time dilation this tool works fine either really up to personal preference for your fifth option over here okay and one thing i just want to emphasize um very badly is that if you are in the early game you are in a low budget build or whatsoever um i really will not recommend you to take beyond because the beyond monsters are really really very strong okay when you reach towards let's say red maps red tier maps it starts to get really scary they have the chance and the ability to one shot you like without even you noticing what happened okay there will be lots of like flame blasts um ice spears and skills from them that are super strong and i am pretty sure you cannot sustain unless you have gone for a really tanky build but most builds are just on the average where you scale nicely between like 50 percent defensive uh stuff and 50 percent offensive stuff so yeah really not recommended to take the beyond in the early game but for end game content i think beyond is very very strong this day like let's say if you have a hate hunter um just take the beyond all three nodes man just take the beyond and then there is a map your zana map modifier on your map device has beyond as well this will get you very far uh, later on in the end game okay the last region will be lira Arten. so for lira Arten, take gatekeepers within their grabs um which is here and distinguish uh, sorry i mean flash bridge which is here so all three are bridge um i think the bridge is also a no-brainer now it has a 2c modifier on your map device it is really cheap it contains one bridge and if you want you can just use another scarab to add an additional bridge okay and there is also a chance for you to get another additional bridge from your small little passives here so uh do take note of that with three with this tree right including the bridge scare up your map mod and the ch small little chance there is uh there's a chance for you to get three bridges every map and if you actually have the watchstones that um that has there's a chance for chayula to appear more often um you can earn a lot you can profit a lot from this because 
I am predicting that Chayula Bristons are going to be especially expensive this league due to the new um, flawless Chayula Bristons. Uh, eventually, it all comes from the pure Chayula Bristone and whatever that drops from it. Okay, and the the last two passive I would recommend is Distinguished Demo- Demolitionist. Oh my god, my English, sorry. <laughs> and Buried Knowledge. Okay, so these two are the the important ones or the good ones I would recommend. They are from Expedition. And why I choose this is just very simple. It is a very good and easy way to earn currency. Like even if you do not know what to detonate, just just explode everything. Okay, <laughs> just explode everything other than the immunity of damage to your particular type of build that you are playing. Okay, so if you do not know what to detonate, I've actually written here in priority of order and what you should take note of. Okay, next is the Uncharted Realms. For the passives over here, it is really up to personal preference. There is no right or wrong over here, but this is what I recommend for casual players, okay? So first, you take Close Allies. This is for you to get more Master Missions and a chance to get a Atlas Mission on each map completion. Okay, next is Adapt Tracker, which is over here. Uh, you will gain... You have a chance to gain double progression for your conquerors and then third will be atlas awaken which is plus one to awakening level i think this is very important because um it improves every drop that you will get on your map like including guardians or unique boss drops or your map boss drops and whatsoever so this is more important and i will say one to three is very straightforward and easy to follow if you can take try and take this three first okay and four onwards will be Tauma Tuchiga Awakening. So we don't really know how to pronounce the word. But yeah, this will allow you allow Cyrus to have 50% increased chance to drop an awakened gem. Like um I recommend this because there are actually a lot of awakened gems that sell for very high profits. A very good example will be awakened multi strike. Yeah, over here. Sorry, so Awakened Multi Strike is a very, is a very expensive gem now. I think it sells for twelve exots. If you, I don't know, accidentally got it, then you are probably one step richer. <laughs> yeah, and the last two points I will take will be Enduring Influence and Secret of Stones. This is for you to map uh much longer and with better efficiency as they both will allow you to use have one more use for your section and we have increased modifier from your watchstones okay over here i'm sorry so 25 percent increased effect of watchstone modifiers yeah otherwise if you are not able to get all passive i will say one to three is probably the most important and then four is a bonus and this is not compulsory so if you would like to farm guardians right just take all three of them over here especially guardians 8 because guardians 8 will give you an additional uh fragment from your guardians right yeah i will say gaze in the abyss is not so important but it is okay to take and if you want to do zana mods just take all three of this it is um quite a good thing to take because if you have double of your where is it the additional uh, yeah, here, Zana missions in areas have double the base number of map options, which means you basically have more chance to get those unique maps that are very expensive. Example will be Cortex maps. I think Cortex maps sells for about 2 exot now or something like that. I, I'm not sure. Okay, for the synthesis mods, I have actually never done them before, so I really do not know how great are they. Like, unless you want to farm for very, very end game contents and items you will have to research this yourself okay that's all for the atlas passives guide i will try my best to update all the um, good maps that you can run for the specific regions um, i will probably need to go and research and try them out myself first before i actually update it into the google sheet so yeah once again thank you for watching do remember to hit the like and subscribe button and i will see you in the next video bye